Alex Salam Alex. I know that you didn't came out here with all these beautiful clothes on just to sit and look at me. You know, my father was a preacher himself. When I was born, I used to sit up when I got old enough, pardon me. I used to sit on the speaker stand with him. And uh, everybody would try to hurry to get me on the speaker stand. And those days, much different from these days. My father was poor and he never could buy me a good suit of clothes. And that uh, I would sit up there, I was about two or three years old, with a little dress on. <laughs> That's right. They put us on little dresses. The boys is really going some now. I'm certainly happy to see all of you smiling faces here today. This is a really beautiful city. If you were here where I am, you would agree with me. Well, I'm not going to take that preacher's text that I told you about. But I'm going to have something similar, but I'm not going to have all of his works on the uh, book stand. See, he had a quart of whiskey up there. Out of all the full line between the Bible and the quarter of whiskey. And he told his people, he says, my text today is that some of these things is going to move you. <laughs> so I have a holy quarter line here in front of me, but I do say, some of these things is going to move you. Yeah. You may be seated. I had forgotten you were standing. You look so even, looking up across uh, your head today, it looked like you were sitting down. But anyway, looking over your head, I see something about your head that I would like to get a hold to. As I used to hear my father preach in the South, he was a preacher of the Baptist Church, and he used to preach about that father. Hell far. He would teach it so finely until even I myself, being his son, would be trembling sometimes, thinking, wonder will I live to get to heaven before ever that comes. And that uh, I was lucky. I didn't have to go to heaven. Heaven came to me. <laughs> We've been preaching here. For the last five or six weeks, on what you see on the board. Yeah. 
we uh, had for our subject up until today the theology of time. And we are still working on time. And since uh, we have arrived here, and it's a little cooler than it was early this morning, we want to take a hold of some of this time subject. We want to take a hold to the real root of time as you really take it for yourself all the time to talk about the time is coming. This has been our subject for many years. And time is what we've been looking for. But time, what you've been looking for, is the time of judgment. So if you've been looking for the time of judgment, this is just what we are preaching on today. The time. I'm very happy to have with us today some of these people who preach like myself. We have from uh, Wisconsin, Reverend John Jr. Wise. Reverend John Jr. Wise, Reverend Morris Neal Wise. Then we have Mr. Richard Stotts, Teacher Wise. We have some wise in here. Oh, the brother here said these are abbreviation for which conscience. I know one thing, I was looking at how it spelt the elect, and I was getting mixed up. So I go back home. We have Reverend Morris Neal. We have Reverend John Jr. We have Mr. Richard Stocks, a teacher, all from Wisconsin. Wisconsin is a smart state. I went out there and made a temple in it years ago. We have a sister by the name of Miss Doris, Doris Wallace. She is a teacher from Wisconsin. Now, all of you wise people coming from Wisconsin here to hear us today, I may have you to say something after you, know, you see whether that I'm leading off for myself or not. I'm going to always try and protect myself. So I'm happy that you're visiting us this afternoon, and we pray a lot that you will be happy to continue. I'm not saying really a rabbit, but I don't like for people to throw bricks at me. I gotta look around. So to have these professional class people with us this afternoon, we hope that they will leave feeling like that we are their brothers and not their enemies. We're not there to teach against each other. We are here to teach the togetherness of us and not to teach against each other. 
whatever you know, whatever you believe in, that's you. Whatever I know, whatever I believe in, that's me. If we like one or the other belief, we will let each other know. But first I would like to say to you, beautiful sitting here before my eyes, as something that we don't have very often. In the world today we find their congregation very small in places. They are breaking up and they are running here and there seeking something more than what they have. Had. I see here before me an estimate somewhat little over a thousand people. I estimate them to be there. You come up here, maybe you and I will get together on that. I think you look like you will number into a thousand a little over. In fact about it, this is a small group to when I go out in the public to take the numbers up to 10,000 and more. This don't make me feel like that I'm bigger than you. No. It makes me feel that we are getting together. It's not that I'm bigger than you. We're all the same. We must remember as the Holy One teach us, we just cannot be so proud that we can reach the height of a mountain or a hill. Since we cannot even reach the height of trees and hills and mountains, why should we be so proud when these things is higher than we are? So if we cannot reach the height of mountains, hills, and even some of our elements is walking around by us much taller than we are, so why should we feel proud? I think that we should relax. Take a seat and sit down and look and see around us what all is really higher than we are. We cannot step through the earth, not by no means. Earth is approximately 8,000 miles in diameter through it. Now our legs don't measure that. I'm only one to ask you to not to be proud. We can't reach the top of the mountain, and we can't step through the earth. So why shouldn't we be on the level on the earth? Right. This is what has ruined the black man in North America. He's taken step after his slave master. Want to be proud and big boy. You cannot be big boy even with him. He has the world and you have nothing. Well, I just want to uh, talk with you a little, a little too hot. For anything else, we just want to talk with each other. We have with us men of all types, and these men want to know whether or not 
that we have something above what they have or something equal that we can listen to each other on. We don't believe in criticism because we all came from slave parents and that if we want to criticize each other, we have to go back and get a hold to the devil slave master and see how many of us did he raise higher than the other. I love compliment, language. I love to be equal with you. I don't like raising myself up above you just because I believe I know more than you. No, we don't do that. I may have insulted you when I said that. But a man taught by God, lived with God for three years and a half, and he taught him his wisdom. I know you didn't hear all of this. I know you did not see all of this. That was taking place 40 years ago. That I'm teaching you about today. But I want to let you know I am not proud over you in the way that we said the enemy proudness comes to us. I'm not that kind of man. I'm a little old man that just loves to talk with you, loves to see you in a better condition than you are in, loves to make acquainted my God and your God to you. This is the kind of little fellow you see standing here. We don't like showing off by no means. <clears throat> if I have to hurt your feelings, I will try and rub uh, the soul down somewhere in what I say. But if I hurt your feelings, I'm hurting it for the better. Sometimes the doctor has to hurt before he can heal. <laughs> so this may come to us and I will talk a discussion. Since we have preachers here, who do we say sit preachers out to preach. According to the reading of the book, God did never send an army of preachers out. The English language uses the word preach. This is all right for us, we understand. We don't intend to make fun, but preacher of the right sort sent to people to teach them of something that is about to come to pass. They are sent from God and they don't never, he never has sent a whole group of them. He made the responsibility to the light on one man. He sent Jonah to Nineveh, hot into the history of Jonah in the Bible, to 
call upon the Ninevites to warn them that yet 40 days and 40 nights Nineveh will be overthrown. Why do he specify the 40 days and 40 nights? We want to find out why did he give him that length of time. Because 40 days is used, 40 nights is used in the end of the world. And to compare his preaching with the end of the world, man's sermon there. Okay, then it is right. He should have that number to give us a picture of what the end of the world figure will look like. Jesus fasted 40 days, he said, in the wilderness. What wilderness did Jesus fast in? We must clean up as we go. This is the way scholars and scientists get together after you. Everything you said, they chase you on. I've been chased by scientists, scholars, still is chased. Not much now. And uh, because they see me in the know. But I just want to teach you science. I'm just grieved over that. I want to teach you the science that you should know. I want you to learn about the presence of God and the presence of his messenger. I want you to learn them. Then you can battle if you want. There is no messenger of God comes in to bully the people that he sent to teach. He let them do that. But he's not to mock and bully them. No. We have thousands of preachers of Christianity in the country of America. You can't find in the Bible where God ever sent a thousand people. The preacher may have to go there and get a thousand, but he never sends a thousand to the people. So I'm not making fun, but I only want you to understand. If there had been sent with me a thousand more Elijah Muhammad, you would have seen me bowing out of that thing because I didn't think God was so weak that he would have to send in a thousand. No fun. Just want to tell you the truth. He'll figure the theologist's side of the truth. This is what I'm here for. I know where we came from. We came from an enemy. Think over in the time of slavery. The enemy made his own preachers. And they had better preach what he tells them to preach. He still likes that. Remember, Reverend, I'm not after you. 
I'm just I want to try and teach you the theology of time. Oh. At the present time, you see he will back up any reverend if that reverend continue to believe what he tell him to teach. He will give him money to teach his Christianity. I say, Reverend, let us look at Christianity when it began. Did not God create the Bible to Adam? And then if God did not give Adam the true religion. What does he look like then saying to you and I that here it is now since Adam died, I raised up Jesus. Brothers, I say we have to remember if Jesus has brought to us that true religion, and yet Adam didn't have it. What are we going to say to Jesus? If Muhammad in the seventh century after Jesus brought out another religion which is sweeping the earth, have more followers than Jesus, then what shall we say? to tell the world that they didn't have the right religion and you're here to give to you the right religion. What did he say? Did he say he came to give the right religion or to preach the old religion of Moses, Abraham, he said, I came not to destroy the law of the prophets, but to fulfill. But where I got my promise from God, the God that was to come and he has come, I don't say that you believe and a man being a God. Maybe you don't. I'm not going to argue with you. If you don't believe man is God, I don't want to argue with you. Just show me that which you believe in. So is there any one of you visiting preachers or teachers that is visiting us here this afternoon? I want you to know that I will temper your welcome to say whatever you want. I know you're not going to say anything ugly, but I'm just saying, I take you to be intelligent people. Whatever you would like to come out here to say, I'll get up here on this stand. You're welcome to come up here. Help yourself. Any one of you would like to have something to say that is visiting us and that is already with us. Any one that have anything to say against or for what I'm teaching our people to understand. Or you may stand where you are, but 
I've got the best of here. That's why. Yes, sir. Come up here, brother. Yes, sir. Have a stand. Well, I like them so long, brother. I like to say something far the teachers of this mom and yourself. And I can bring the thing called my uh to have you here to teach us the truth that we have never known. And I pray a lot that I will forever follow you and that I will be able to come out whenever you are to teach us to hear this wonderful truth that I may take it back and spread it to the people that are in the areas where I live at of you and the wonderful work you're doing to bring us to the knowledge of ourselves, our God, and his great teacher, you, dear Holy Apostle. We love you. I love you with all my heart. And I pray a lot of bless me to continue this way. Thank Amen. you, dear Apostle. Is there another one? Yes, sir, brother. Come right on up. You can come up here. Yeah, I'm from 26B. I'm from 26B in Oakland. My name is Brother Kenneth Williams. And my uh, my question, because I've only taken my letter out a couple of months ago, is about some reading that I've been doing. And I. You mentioned uh, that the 10,000 angels were here in this country, and I wanted to ask, uh, would, would they be from among the dead? We can't hear him up here. I wanted, I wanted to ask if the angels, the 10,000 angels that are in this country to help you are from among the dead, the so-called Negro. Oh, yes, brother. Yes, they are here. They are not to be pointed out to people who will point them out. Like uh, in the day of Sodom and Gomorrah's destruction, there were the angels there with Lot that was going to do the job. But they couldn't tell the people before the day that they were going to do it. That the people would have tried to kill them before. The same way it is today. You can't point out the destroyer of the world to no one. Do you point them out to the enemy to take attack on him at once? Because they're human beings like you and I. And we can be killed. Yes, sir. And uh, if we have power to keep you from killing us, well then, we may bring about the total thing before time that the others get right and get ready to go out. See, yes, these things is used by brother, by wise people and not by people just would like to tempt God and tempt his uh, messengers. You are not to tempt God, nor to tempt his messenger for just yourself. You've got millions of people in America, and they may all not be ready, and God wants to save us all. Not to do something just to please someone who would like to tempt God. You can't tempt God, brother. This is dangerous to try. And uh, to satisfy one person and his desire, you can't do that. We have millions here to please, or rather to try to save. And we hope that they'll be pleased with our safety. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.
exercise another one. Oh, this, is the rec- this is the rector of our school, Gerard O'Mara. I salam alaikum, sir. I would like to say on behalf of Wa alaikum salam. I would like to say on behalf of the staff members and the students at Muhammad Universities of Islam, we thank Allah for you for allowing us to teach Muhammad's children the truth of self, the truth of the living God, and the truth of the devil. I too would like to bear witness and say that I knew nothing before you took me in your hands. I, with all of my degrees and everything behind me, it was nothing but that to perpetuate the devil's civilization. I thank you, sir, for teaching me the right way and enabling me to help you throughout the United States. Thank you, sir. I salam alaykum. I like him. Salam. This is our director of our school throughout North America. She's head of our school. Uh, what colleges and uh, what college and uh, university of did you graduate from, sister? This is what you should have told them when you began. Go there and tell them where you was graduated. I got my Bachelor of Education degree. I received my Bachelor of Science in Education from Chicago State University. I received my Master's degree from Chicago State University. I have had graduate courses in engineering design from the University of California, the University of Wisconsin. I have an Associate of Science degree in electrical engineering, an Associate of Science degree in arts uh, with photography as a major, and, well, a few others I can't think of at this moment, sir. (laughs) Thank you. to you and me, it's due to the fact that we hear a lot of people criticizing us out there in the street that the school of Islam, you can't learn nothing there when the head of it is no graduate of no school. And that they do that to keep you from coming in. I want you to remember that there is not a prophet in the Bible, nor Holy Quran, was a graduate from the people that he was one. Not one. If you can find me a prophet in the Bible, was a graduated man from some university of the land, I will pay you $10,000 for lying. The Bible said Moses was highly educated. He was brought up in the house of Pharaoh. That Moses we don't find in the Bible where he was 
educate under Pharaoh's school, Indian school, with a degree. And we find this man, Moses, whom they say was well educated, out, away from Pharaoh. When Allah called him to go to Pharaoh, he was not in Egypt. He was out of Egypt where he was called. Now, we, I think, talk a little too much on that which we know little about. Moses was educated all right enough, but Moses did not boast of his education to Pharaoh. If he had, he would have been talking to Pharaoh in his own language. But he didn't do that. The argument that they had between each other about his non expert language. He didn't argue, Pharaoh didn't argue with him that he had taught him an education, but he condemned Moses for not having an education capable to talk with him. So we want to be right in these things. Some of these places where you find where Pharaoh and Moses is exchanging arguments is due to this time and not in that time. So I won't go too far with it because we don't have uh, much more time. And I want, don't want you to go back uh, with your money weighing out your pocket because here is a rest place for it. <laughs> so, if there is someone else would like to have a word to say, boy, it's 